Part 22, the one and only Ivan. So here I'll start you with this picture right where we left off. So through his glass, he sees that family. Still there. I cover my eyes, I look again. They are still there, watching. Every day I watch them through my window the way my visitors used to watch me. See how they chase, groom, See how they play, sleep, see how they live? They're graceful the way Stella was, moving just enough, only as much as they need. They stare at me, heads tilted, pointing and hooting, and I wonder, are they as fascinated by me as I am by them? She. Her hoots make my ears hurt. I admire her intact canines from afar, so her teeth... Her name is Kinyani. She is faster than I am, spry and probably smarter, although I am twice her size, and that too is important. She is terrifying and beautiful, like a painting that moves. Oh. Door. Today the humans lead me to a door. On the other side, Kinyani and the others wait for me. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready to be a silverback. I'm Ivan, just Ivan, only Ivan. I've decided it's not a good day to socialize. I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> wondering. All night I lie awake wondering about Ruby. Has she already walked through the door like the one I'm facing? Was she as scared as I am? Scared the way she must have been that day she fell in the hole? I think of Ruby's endless curiosity and the questions she loves to ask. Have you ever danced with a tiger, Ivan? Will, you, will your fur turn blue? Why doesn't that little boy have a tail? If Ruby were here with me, she'd be asking, What's on the other side of the door, Ivan? Ruby would want to know, and she would have been through the door by now. Ready. Want to try again, Ivan? My ass. I think of Ruby, and I tell myself, It's time. The door opens. Outside at last. Sky. Grass. Tree. Ant. Stick. Bird, dirt, cloud, wind, flower, rock, rain, mine, mine, mine. Oops. I sniff, approach, strut a bit, but the others don't welcome me. They have sharp teeth and loud voices. Did I do something wrong? Kinyani chases me. She throws a stick at me. She corners me. I know that she's testing me to see if I'm a true silverback, one who can protect her family. I cower and hide my eyes. Maya lets me back in the cage. What it was like. I lie awake and try to remember what it was like being a gorilla. How did we move? How did we touch? How did we know who was boss? I try to think past the babies and the motorbikes and the popcorn and the short pants. I try to imagine Ivan as he might have been pretending. The juvenile male approaches. He's eyeing my food hungrily. I imagine a different Ivan, my father's son. I grumble and swat and swagger. I beat my chest until the whole world hears. Kenny watches and so do the others. I move toward the younger upstart and he retreats, meaning he backs up. Almost as if he believes I'm the silver silverback I'm pr pretending to be. Nest. So there they have a picture of the nest. I'm making a nest on the ground. It isn't a true jungle nest. The leaves are inferior and the sticks are brittle. They snap when I weave, weave them into place. The others watch, grunting their disapproval. Too small, too flimsy, an ugly thing to see. But when I climb into that leafy cradle, it's like floating on treetop mist. More TV. Maya wants me to go back into my glass cage. I can tell because she's tempting me toward the door with a trail of tiny marshmallows. I try to ignore her. I don't want to leave the outside. It's a cloudless day and I found just the right spot for a nap, but I relent and she adds yogurt raisins to the trail. Or when she adds yogurt raisins to the trail, she knows my weakness all too well. In the glass cage, the TV is on. It's another nature show. Jerky and unfocused, 
I expect to see gorillas, but none up here. I hear a shrill sound like a toy trumpet. Who do you think it is? My heart quickens. I rush close to the screen, and there she is, Ruby. She is rolling in a lovely pool of mud with two other young elephants. Another elephant approaches. She towers over Ruby. She strokes Ruby, nudges her. She makes soft noises. They stand side by side, just the way Stella and Ruby used to do. Their trunks entwined. I see something new in Ruby's eyes, and I know what it is. It's joy. I watch the whole thing, and then Maya plays it again for me, and again. At last, she turns off the TV and carries it out of the cage. I put my hands on the glass. Maya looks over. Thank you, I try to say with my eyes. Thank you. It. Kiniani ambles toward me. She taps me on the shoulder, and Knuckle runs away. I watch her, arms crossed over my chest. I'm careful not to make a sound. I'm not sure what we're doing. She ambles back, shoves at me, dashes past, and then I realize what's happening. We're playing. We're playing tag, and I'm it. Romance. Make eye contact, show your form, strut, grunt, throw a stick, grunt some more, make some moves. Romance is hard work. It looks so easy on TV. I'm not sure will I will ever get the hang of it. More about romance. I wish Bob were here. I could use some advice. I try to recall all the romance movies we watched together. I remember the talking, the hugging, the face licking. I'm not very good at this, but it's fun trying. Grooming, this is a short one. Is there anything sweeter than the touch of another as she pulls a dead bug from your fur. <laughs> That's awesome.